What's up guys, this is Sam from CG Candy. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create a little set driven key rig to control a couple bones. Uh, basically create a little finger here like we have here. Um, so let's get started. Alright, so basically what I've done here is I've set up a few joints. I've set up a handle that uses my controller. If you've ever seen a rig online of a character with a bunch of uh, handles on it that are used to control it, that's essentially what I'm doing with this. Um, and now if you were to repeat this process, you could create an entire hand or anything you really want, a tail, something like that. Alright, so let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need an object that we can use to control this. So uh, this was my example one and here's my other set of bones. Nothing fancy here, just a few bones uh, snapped to the grid so that they're uh, about equidistant but that's not too important. So most people use a NURB curve of some sort. So let's go ahead and go to create NURB primitives and create a circle. Now I'm going to hold X and I'm going to snap to the grid there. I'm going to scale it up like I have on the other one there. Hold J and rotate. That will do the discrete rotate. Um, all right. So that's fine. And let's go ahead and freeze the transforms on that just so we get rid of this rotate uh, scale and all that. So go ahead and do uh, modify freeze transforms. All right. So um, the other thing I did is I colored this yellow. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that real quick because on a lot of rigs you'll see they're color coded. Um, a lot of times it'll be blue on one side, red on the other, and yellow for the middle stuff. So anyway, the way to do that Let's go over here to the attribute editor or you can click over here to do it and we want to go to enable overrides and now we can um, and go, this is under drawing overrides if you have that minimized which you might so go ahead and do um, uh, object display drawing overrides and we want to check enable overrides now we can slide this to any color we want so I'll go ahead and make this one red all right so there we go Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to set our keyframes for set driven key. All right, so how do we do that? Well, first we want to create an attribute that we're going to use to control things. Um, you know how if you've ever looked at a rig, you'll see there's things like uh, hip sway, um, finger curl, things like that. These are attributes that someone's created and then they've actually plugged them into something so that they have a function. So let's go over here to the um, channel box and let's look at our uh, NURB circle. So we have a lot of attributes on here that aren't really relevant to what we're doing right now. You can hide those and lock them. I tend to not like to hide them until I'm done with the rig because you uh, often find yourself needing them again. So let's create our own attribute. Let's go to modify and we're going to go to add attribute while we have that circle selected. All right, so we want to make sure this is set to float because we're going to have a uh, value that we can go through. There's different types, like a Boolean, which could be like an on-off switch or something like that. But for now, we want to use a float. And let's call this um, finger curl. And you see the way I typed it with the lowercase first letter and the uppercase second? Um, it should automatically recognize that as capitals and put a space in there for you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put as our minimum, uh, we want to put negative 10 and our maximum, let's put 10 and our default zero. So the reason for this is when it's zero, the finger will be not bent at all. When it's 10, we'll have the finger curled all the way. And when it's negative 10, we'll have it bent backwards a little bit. So let's go ahead and do add and that will add that attribute onto our selection. You can see right there, it says finger curl. So we can close this window now. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually uh, do something with the slider. You can see if I select this and I middle mouse drag, it's sliding up and down, but it's not doing anything because all we've done right now is created a attribute that we've given it a minimum and a maximum, but it doesn't do anything. So set it back to zero and let's go ahead and select our bones. So right now we're going to be using this bone is not important right now. This is just to tell the rotation of this bone. So let's select these three bones. So go ahead and click the first one, hold shift, click the second one, hold shift, and click the third one. Now we want to go to animate, set driven key, set. 
When you do this, whatever you have selected will go into the driven and you'll see a space for the driver. So what this means is you can think of it, you know, it's called driven and driver. So let's think of it like a car. Um, this handle is our driver driving our car and these are our passengers and we're telling them, you know, where we're going. So if you can imagine that this driver is saying, all right, let's all bend and curl our finger and these passengers are just doing what the driver says. All right, so now we have to tell, you can see that it's loaded in the driven, which is the finger one, two, and three joints. And now we need to load in our driver. So let, let me quickly name this um, finger control. All right. And now, let's see, I've already named the other one that, so it put a one there. Um, so now we want to tell it that this is the driver. So we just have to select that and hit load driver. All right. So now we're... Now you can see all these attributes appeared over here. Um, and what this is saying is this is the attribute that is driving the attributes on something else. So let's select the finger curl that we've created. And now we have to tell it what is this finger curl controlling. So when we slide that uh, value from 0 to 10, what's actually happening? Um, real quick, I, I just need to find out what attribute I'm actually wanting to control when I bend these. So I'm just going to select one. I'm going to hit uh, e to rotate. I'm going to bend this down and you can see that it's changing uh, rotate Z. So that's the value that I want to use. So I'm going to undo it, get it back to zero. And now I want to select all three of these because I'm going to control the same attribute for all three of them. And I want to select rotate Z. All right. So now it's, we're saying finger curl is controlling rotate Z of these three joints. All right, so right now our finger curl is set to zero. So let's go ahead and place our first keyframe at zero. Okay, now um, basically when this is at zero, uh, these joints are going to go back to the rotate Z value that they were at when we set that keyframe, which should be about zero. All right, so let's go ahead and do our next one. So what, first thing we want to do, let's select the uh, controller again, and let's slide it up to... 10. So this is the most curled that these fingers are going to be. This is our maximum value. All right. So, um, you know, if you had an actual model, you could see the geometry bending possibly. Um, I'm just going to do this, you know, just really, I'm just going to guess. So I'll hold J again. I'll rotate it perfectly 90 degrees. So you can see our Z is set to ne negative 90. And you can see that it's red now, which means it has a keyframe on it, which is good. That's uh, that's our set driven key, placing a keyframe on there. All right, so let's go ahead and rotate the next one, 90 degrees. All right, so now you can imagine that this is a curled finger. You can maybe actually even rotate that a little more to be sort of realistic. If you hold your finger up, um, you can get an idea of how that might look. All right, anyway, so that looks good enough for me. So let's go ahead and um, since we've already set this to 10 and we've rotated these, we can go ahead and hit key again. All right. So now when we select this uh, controller and we slide the finger curl back to zero, you can see that it's uncurling. And when we go to 10, it's curling again. All right. So now we have um, our zero placement and our 10 placement, but we haven't done anything for negative 10 yet. So if you see, if I put zero, and negative 10, it's not doing anything at this point. So we need to define negative 10. So with our um, controller set to negative 10, let's now bend these fingers in the opposite direction uh, and go ahead and hold your hand up and see about how high, it's not very far, it's not like bending the other way. Um, I'm just gonna you know, eyeball it again and just bend these ever so slightly. Uh, you know, this might even be too much, but usually it's good to go a little more than what you might use, and then you can always do less. But once you've set this, it's hard to push it further. So, all right, so we've uh, set this to negative 10, and we've rotated these, so we can go ahead and place another key. All right, so let's go ahead and test it. There we go. So we now have our zero default for the finger curl. We have the fully uh, flexed finger and then we have slightly bent backwards. All right, so hopefully this helped you guys out and uh, just keep in mind you can use this for anything. Um, 
Another thing that I commonly see on hand rigs is finger spread, which would be like if you're opening your uh, hands like a, a web, um, spreading them apart this way, oops, this way, which would be done the exact same way you would just um, use uh, another rotate value. So in this case, it would be rotate Y instead of Z. Um, you can use this for um, switching between IK and FK rigs. You can use this um, for bending toes, fingers, anything you can think of. So this is one of the uh, key things of rigging. So hopefully this helped. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if I uh, went too fast or if I went over something, I'll, I'll uh, answer your questions in the comments. Thanks a lot.